Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an incredible day as always. If you leave a like, if you comment, if you leave two likes, if you leave multiple comments, or if you subscribe, you help the channel out and I will be very much appreciative. Welcome back to another News I Missed, where I go over. News I Missed. And let's jump right into it. Ripple, a popular fintech firm and a major player in the XRP market, has announced that it is committing $1 billion XRP, worth roughly around $800 million US dollars, to accelerate development and new use cases on the XRP ledger. The $1 billion XRP fund, according to a press release, is an extension to the firm's XRP Ledger Grants Program that was published or launched last year and has so far awarded $6 million in funding to more than 50 open source projects built on top of the XRP Ledger. Here's the tweet right here. It says this funding will help launch an acceleration program, a DeFi program, a diversity and inclusion fund, a sustainability program, an expanded grants judging committee, anything else that seems like a Long list of things. For those of you who do not know, this was more of a hot topic in 2017 because people had nothing else to do with their time back then. I, I promise you, like there was nothing to do in 2017. Um, where people found out uh, that not only was um, Ripple a company, I know weird, right? Uh, but also that XRP was pre-mined. And at that point, the entire idea was... Uh, Bitcoin only, Bitcoin, 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 you have to mine Bitcoin, yada, yada, yada. But now I think the market has grown a lot more used to coins being pre-mined. It happens all the time. Bringing on to that story, uh, the company Ripple holds a massive amount of XRP. I don't remember the exact number. I want to say it's 60 billion. Maybe it's a bit less. Maybe I don't remember. I don't, I don't, who, who, who knows? Um, and they have that crypto in escrow that releases once a month. So the company ends up receiving said XRP from the escrow. The idea being, we hold so much XRP, we are showing you that we will not dump all of it onto the market at once. If we try to, it would take 60 months and you would know beforehand. So I assume that this is literally just a month's worth of XRP from the company uh, to actually fund all of these things. We have had news before about the Ripple team or the Ripple company funding things like this. I poked some fun at them in the beginning of 2020 because a lot of the things that they were talking about having never really came to fruition. To be fair, it's not only them, it's every other cryptocurrency project as well. They were all talking about ICOs and STOs, which were very popular after ICOs. Those were security token offerings. Uh, there's been so much discussion as to, uh, what do you call it, DeFi platforms and NFT platforms. And I feel like a lot of the older legacy coins are trying to keep up in a certain way. Not in a mean way, but it's more of a, uh, their original purpose was to be a, a payment method back and forth to send value. But now there's like 19 other things that they also have to do. So you have to have these programs to be able to expand and to kind of make your coin Still seems super young and hip for everyone else out there. So I hope it works out. I can't remember what other things we heard last year that Ripple was going to be doing that I think are still not there. Weren't they also once again making uh, like an NFT thing? Like I'm fairly certain they were going to have NFTs on top of the XRP ledger, but I don't think that ever actually ended up happening or maybe it didn't, I just didn't pay attention. Anyway, that's the uh, Ripple news. Yeah. I mean, we have really weird waves of Ripple news. Sometimes it is, it's in the news like nine months in a row. Then it disappears for like six months. It begins to trickle back in. And yeah, here's some Ripple news. Not that often like it used to be many, many moons ago. And yeah, let's move on. Next up, here's an interesting one. Prince Philip of Serbia and Yugoslavia says that Bitcoin is freedom. Noting that we need to take the money away from the state, the prince stressed. We need to have hard money again. We need to have good quality money that's not subject to inflation. 
not making a joke at all. When I first read this, I thought it was a bit of a joke uh, simply because as a prince of a country, you are the state. You get it? Like you are law. You are the prince under the king of the country. So I was like, do you need to take the money away from yourself? Once again, not even joking. Prince Philip of Serbia and Yugoslavia recently talked about Bitcoin on a Serbian TV show hosted by Ivan Ivanovic. Okay. Prince Philip, a member of the house of the Kara Dordovic, is the second son of the last crown prince of the former kingdom of Yugoslavia. He is the fraternal twin of Prince Alexander and the second in line to the throne after Prince Peter. That's a lot of brothers. Prince Philip is currently working with a global asset manager in London, according to the royal family of Serbia's website. He said, I work in finance. I work in asset management for an international finance company. The head office is in New York, but has a big office in London. I'm an analyst. I love to analyze the world. He added, I analyze and many... And mainly tell clients what happens with the market, what's going on with their portfolios. And I speak with a lot of other analysts and a lot of other portfolio managers within the company. We have to make decisions. It's a great experience to be an analyst. He was then asked about crypto, emphasizing that his advice is definitely for free. He began by saying crypto, but quickly changed or corrected himself to say Bitcoin. He said, not crypto, but Bitcoin. It's only about Bitcoin. He said, Bitcoin is freedom, and this is something I want for everyone. He described, this is something everyone has to learn. They will learn slowly. Some people will not want to learn it because they are not used to it. They want to protect the system that they do well in. Bit of a conundrum. I mean, one, I wonder how much money, think about this. I wonder how much money you have to have to be able to have a prince give you financial information. Think of how rich you have to be. But guys, can you call up the prince? I want to thinking about buying a new house in the Hamptons. Like what like what level of wealth do you have to be able to I would I would love to know so I can try and get up there so I can be like yeah, I have a prince giving me financial information. The other side of it being things like this always make me scratch the noggin, scratch my head. You want to know why? Because We've seen an increase in the amount of very wealthy individuals. I'm going to assume this man is not a pauper. Once again, not a joke. And when they say things like this out loud, remember, you know, if you have, if you're into something, normally your three of your friends are into it. And then some other friends are kind of also into it as well. If we're talking about a new financial system that's only been around for 13 years that we're expecting to be around for a very long time and have an extreme amount of wealth concentration into it in the in the in the relatively near future. I'm going to assume he's not the only person who's into this. I'm going to also assume if you believe that Bitcoin is freedom, he probably owns some Bitcoin. I'm going to assume also he probably owns more than one Bitcoin. I'm going to assume if he has any other friends who he's getting who's giving financial advice to, they probably also own tons of Bitcoin as well. So it's always these things that make me kind of think, how deep are these people into the market? Because this isn't, you know, we're not hearing from princes every single day. Even before, when we had news about, this was 2019 or 2018, about the people in Dubai. Remember, oh my gosh, this was, there was one article years ago. It was something really weird. It was something along the lines of, there was one wallet. I don't I remember how it was associated with Dubai in some sort of way, but there was like a, a worker for a wealthy person who announced like, yeah, He decided to get into Bitcoin. So I think they bought like 18,000 Bitcoin at once. And they were like, yeah, we're going to try and accumulate until we get up to a million. And I was like, no one else heard that except for me. So especially when you think of the amount of millionaires and billionaires that there are on the planet, these, not all of them are sleeping. Even if it's just 1% of that 1%, Think of how much they're buying, but more realistically, I assume it's it's at least 10 to 15% of all the wealthy people on the planet. Because don't forget about every celebrity. It's at least 30 or 40 at this point who's talked about being in this space for a long time. Don't forget that really awkward thing a couple of years ago where Kim and Kanye had that interview and Kim was like, uh, we're into Bitcoin now. And I was like, uh-huh. And once again, no one paid attention. Anyway, that's the Prince Philip of Serbia and Yugoslavia saying that Bitcoin is freedom news. Uh Uh-huh. Makes you wonder. Yeah. 
Let's move on. Also in the news, cryptocurrency exchange Gemini has received an electronic money license from the Central Bank of Ireland. It was the 18th organization to receive the license and the first since qu- uh, t- I almost said quarter October 2020. Gemini joined crypto holders or license holders such as Coinbase, Stripe, Square, and Meta. I was just making fun of them like a couple of days ago because Gemini's never really in the news and like Binance is always in the news. And I was like, why isn't Gemini getting also licenses as well? Well, they shut me up. The e-money license, which for Gemini applied in early, wow, early 2020. It took two years for someone to look over 14 pages of paperwork. Okay. We'll allow it to issue electronic money provide electronic payment services, and handle electronic payments for third parties. It will also enable the company to, to passport those services to European economic area countries, which are European Union members, Iceland, Liechtenstein, and Norway. Gemini already provides exchange services in those countries. You know, you know what I always find like the weirdest thing about all of this? Even, you know, thank you, thank you, Prince Philip. Um... The idea that we have a system that doesn't have to have an intermediary and there's still so much regulation around it. I mean, because I, you know, I just assume people, regulators, governments are just kind of, of course, used to being in control, but it almost boggles the mind that someone or a group of people mathematically figured out how to have a system that as long as we are all running a node... Money can move anywhere at any time by anyone. And then you get news like it took them two years to receive a license to be able to do exactly what Bitcoin already does and what Cardano and XRP and Solana and already do. It's so weird to think about. Like, it's kind of like imagine like you're really hungry and there's like an apple tree, apple tree, an apple tree, a peach tree and a pineapple tree tree sitting outside but you're like no no no. i i have to wait until i get paperwork that i could actually eat it's like it i don't know it always it's just how things are but it's so backwards that we have the means to do something completely different and change the world anyway that's the gemini news good job to them i hope they revel in the fact that they have new paperwork and i assume they've applied for another country recently and it'll take them another two or three years to get that paperwork done why does everything take so long i always wonder where could we be and i'm and i mean this i think this all the time where could we be as a society if we got things done quicker and i'm not talking about the whole like a uh, facebook model like break things and you know like you know oh well we broke it try and time this hard again like we know how to solve world hunger. It's nothing about logistics. Like, it's just simply infrastructure. We know how to clear up the infrastructure for the parts of the world that are really doing bad. I'm looking at you, America. If you if you have the chance today, watch a documentary. Type in America infrastructure. You are going to be mortified. Do you know how much of the piping in the United States is still from the 19th century? A huge portion of it was created and put underground in 1945. Why does it take so long to fix everything? Like, why is this constant? Think of where we could be. I mean, because we could, you know, think about this. We could literally probably fix everything in about a year. Think, I mean, think honestly to yourself. One year. Imagine everyone having complete control over their money 24 hours a day, and there was no longer a discussion. Anyway, uh, that's another, you know, a whole other conversation. Anyway, um, yeah, that's the Gemini news. Congratulations to them. We could live in such a better world, but let's move on. Next up, the largest digital currency asset manager in terms of assets under management, logically, Grayscale has announced the launch of a smart contract fund that is compiled of Ethereum competitors. Ooh. The fund is called GSCPXE. 
Y. Give it a give it a real name and hold seven different smart contract coins and it's Grayscale's 18th investment product to date. Grayscale Investments has announced another fund that covers the landscape of smart contract tokens but leaves the largest smart token contract, okay, out of the equation. I mean, Ethereum is like 11 of their other funds. Like it's, you know, it's fine to have other coins. It's totally fine. The new Grayscale fund is called the Smart Contract Platform X Ethereum Fund. Jeez Louise or Gesepikis. Essentially, smart contracts allow users to program operations on blockchains, duh. And data shows that market valuation of all the smart contract platforms today totals $669 billion. Grayscale's announcement on Tuesday noted that there are seven smart contract platform coins in the fund. The coins are Cardano, Solana, Avalanche, Polkadot, Polygon, Algorand and Lumens, while GS Sikipika is the company's 18th investment products. The smart contract platform X Ethereum Fund is also Grayscale's third diversified fund offering. As you might have expected, this was extremely popular news. Grayscale has begun to expand their listings as to exactly what they are holding and what they are offering to their clientele. I assume while Bitcoin and Ethereum are quite popular and a lot of people want them and like them, whenever you hear that there's a coin that has gone up by 17% while Bitcoin has gone up by like half a percent, you kind of go, hmm, maybe I should add that to my portfolio, not financial advice because a lot of coins out there are crap. I'm just letting you know the the potential scenario as to what uh, could be taking place. So cool. Let's see if it works out. Uh, don't forget, Grayscale has had a number of other funds over the last two or three years, and many of them have actually failed because they've been filled with garbage, nonsense coins. However, a lot of these coins are very popular, and I think they could, I think this could be a very major fund going forward, and I think it's actually kind of nice, I'll say it this way, that they didn't choose crappy coins. That's an, I said it nicely. Anyway, that's the uh, Grayscale is launching a smart contract fund with Ethereum competitors because you can't have all your chips on one bag of Doritos, whatever. Where, where do you put chips? Anyway, that's the Grayscale news. And yeah, uh, let's move on. And to finish things off, a Brazilian Ultimate Fighting Champion star will receive his first earnings in crypto to hedge against inflation and protect the value of his hard-earned money. That's a really intense sentence. Matthew Nicolau is the latest athlete that has opted to receive his first earnings in BTC through a deal that was assisted by Bitwage Payroll Service. Nicolau, the eighth-ranked UFC flyweight fighter, flyweight, Okay, received his first salary in Bitcoin this past Monday. Wow. It is believed that the Brazilian fighter opted for a cryptocurrency paycheck to hedge against the rising inflation, stating in a recent interview that earning Bitcoin will help secure the value of his hard-earned money. Alrighty, he said. The money, I, I make money the hard way. I, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I can say that word. I something for it. MMA is an intense sport that you put everything you have into. While I constantly fight on one hand... What? I have a feeling I am constantly losing money on the other. Oh, he meant that figuratively. I was like, is he, is he, like, I just figured he was swinging with one arm. Then it hit me. Bitcoin is the solution. Alongside Nicolau, his manager, Vinicius, Vinic, Vinic, Vinif, La Casas, will also be using Bitwage to receive a portion of his salary in Bitcoin. Both Nicolau and his manager are very bullish on Bitcoin. I wonder why. And are also looking to spread the Bitcoin gospel with the latest deal. Welcome to the club, sir. I assume you've been in the club for a very long time. He was kind of sitting in the background with with, with shades on, um, not really talking to anyone. But we keep getting tons of celebrities who are in the cryptocurrency space. We're buying up all the cryptocurrencies. And da, 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 da. I assume he's, once again, has been holding Bitcoin for a while, talking to his other teammates. I still think the uh, moment of change will come when other teammates or other, he's not on the team, he's a UFC, when other people in his sport realize, hey, 
he made money that I didn't make last year. Let me go do the exact same thing. This is how I think the cryptocurrency market will expand quite rapidly. So hope it works out, bro. Hope you, how much did he get paid? Doesn't even say. It's a gosh darn shame. Hope it, hope it was worth it. Yeah, that's the people fighting for, for Bitcoin in the streets news. I don't know what UFC is. I'm joking. I, I know what it is. <laughs> I, I can feel somebody like, <gasps> and let's move on. Yeah. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. Do hope is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening and or supporting and or leaving a like and or commenting and or still being here listening to me be ridiculous. Thank you all once again. That is a look at this. Look at this line. Holy what in the what is this? What is, what's happening here? Why are all these are these backed up transactions? Oh, low fee line. Wow, that's terrible. Oh, wow. Okay. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See?